There are certain concepts that lend themselves well to proofs using the principle of mathematical induction. These are concepts that are defined using what we call recursive definitions. For example, let's take a look at how natural number exponents are defined over the real numbers. For a given real number x with x not equal to 0, we define x to the power 0 to be the number 1, and we then say that for any natural number n, the quantity x to the power n is defined to be x to the power n minus 1 multiplied by x. In this way, we can define all natural number exponents. Because, for example, if we considered the set A to be the set of all natural numbers for which x to the power n were defined, we would see that 1 is in the set A. This is because x to the power 1 is defined to be x to the power 0 times x, which is 1 times x, and so x to the power 1 is equal to x. We can then say if n is an element in the set A, meaning x to the power n is defined, then we get x to the power n plus 1 is equal to x to the power n times x, which, if x to the power n is defined, then means x to the power n plus 1 is defined as well. And so this shows that the set A is an inductive set. If x to the power n is defined, then x to the power n plus 1 is defined. Since the set A is an inductive set containing the number 1, the principle of mathematical induction tells us that all natural numbers are in the set, and so x to the power n is defined for all natural numbers. However, since this concept is defined recursively, it's particularly well suited to proofs using the principle of mathematical induction. To see how this works, let's prove a few of the basic properties of exponents. To begin, we're going to prove that exponents distribute over multiplication. This means for every value of x and y in the real numbers, with x and y not equal to 0, the product x times y to the exponent n will be equal to x to the exponent n times y to the exponent n. And this is true for all values of n in the natural numbers. To prove this, we begin by letting x and y be arbitrary real numbers, and we assume that x and y are not equal to 0. And we see that we now have to prove for every value of n in the natural numbers, the equation xy to the exponent n is equal to x to the n times y to the exponent n holds. To do this, we're going to use the principle of mathematical induction. This means we begin by considering the set of whichever natural number values of n satisfy this equation. We're now going to prove that this set is an inductive set that contains the number 1. And if we can do that, the principle of mathematical induction will tell us that all natural number values of n belong to the set. To show that 1 is an element in the set A, we can look at the left-hand side of the equation when n has a value of 1. This is x times y to the exponent 1, which is, of course, defined to be x times y. But x, of course, is x to the exponent 1, and y is y to the exponent 1, and so we get that x times y is equal to x to the exponent 1 times y to the exponent 1, which proves that 1 is an element in the set A. Next, to show that A is an inductive set, we take an arbitrary element of the set A. We then know for this arbitrary value of n, we have the expression xy to the exponent n is equal to x to the n times y to the n. Our goal from this is to prove that the value n plus 1 also belongs to the set A. In other words, we're trying to prove that the equation x times y to the exponent n plus 1 is equal to x to the exponent n plus 1 times y to the exponent n plus 1. We can get this equation from our assumed equation if we simply multiply both sides by xy. On the left-hand side, we have xy to the exponent n times xy, which by the definition of exponents gives us xy to the exponent n plus 1. On the right-hand side, we'll need to shuffle around the multiplication a little bit to give us x to the exponent n times x times y to the exponent n times y. This, again, using the recursive definition of exponents, gives us x to the power n plus 1 times y to the power n plus 1. And so we have our equation xy to the exponent n plus 1 is equal to x to the exponent n plus 1 times y to the exponent n plus 1. And this proves that the value n plus 1 belongs to the set A. We've now shown for all values of n in the set A, n plus 1 is also in the set A, which means A is an inductive set. By the principle of mathematical induction, this tells us that all natural numbers are in the set A, and so our equation holds for all natural numbers. And this completes the proof. Next, let's look at another well-known property of exponents. 
This property says for all values of x in the real numbers, if x is not equal to zero, then for all values of m and n in the natural numbers, x to the exponent m plus n is equal to x to the exponent m times x to the exponent n. Of course, we begin the proof by letting x be an arbitrary value in the real numbers and assuming that x is not equal to zero. From here, we see that we have two natural numbers, m and n, involved in our expression, and we're trying to prove that our formula holds for all values of m and n. What we can do with this is treat one of these values in the usual way just using the principle of universal generalization. We can let m be an arbitrary natural number. However, for the other value, the value of n, we're going to prove that this is true for all values of n using the principle of mathematical induction. This means we begin by identifying the set A equal to the set of all values of n for which x to the power m plus n is equal to x to the power m times x to the power n, given our arbitrary fixed value of m. The principle of mathematical induction, of course, says if we can show that this set A is an inductive set that contains the number 1, then the set A will contain all values of n in the natural numbers. To show that the number 1 is an element in the set A, we need to show that the expression holds, given our arbitrary value of m, when n has the value of 1. Looking at the left-hand side, if n has a value of 1, this gives us the expression x to the exponent m plus 1. Now we know from the definition of natural number exponents that x to the exponent m plus 1 is equal to x to the exponent m times x. And x is of course x to the exponent 1. And so this gives us x to the exponent m times x to the exponent n when n has a value of 1. This shows that our equation holds when n has a value of 1, and so 1 is an element in the set A. Next, to prove that A is an inductive set, we take an arbitrary element n in A, and for this arbitrary element, we then have the equation x to the exponent m plus n is equal to x to the exponent m times x to the exponent n. What we're trying to prove from this is that the number n plus 1 is an element in A. This means we're trying to prove that the equation x to the exponent m plus n plus 1 is equal to x to the exponent m times x to the exponent n plus 1. We can get this from our assumed equation if we simply multiply on both sides by x. On the left hand side, we have from the definition of natural number exponents that x to the exponent m plus n times x is x to the exponent m plus n plus 1. On the right hand side, we have that x to the exponent n times x is x to the exponent n plus 1, just using the definition of natural number exponents. And this gives us the equation that we're looking for. We've now shown for all values of n in the set a, n plus 1 is also in the set a, which means a is an inductive set. The principle of mathematical induction tells us that since a is an inductive set containing the number 1, a contains all of the natural numbers, and so our equation holds for all natural number values of n. Of course, since m was an arbitrary natural number, the principle of universal generalization tells us that the equation also holds for all values of the natural number m. And since x was an arbitrary real number, not equal to zero, we know that this holds for all such real numbers. For our last example, we're going to prove for all values of x in the real numbers, if x is not equal to 0, then for all values of m and n in the natural numbers, x to the exponent m times n is equal to the quantity x to the exponent m raised to the exponent n. To prove this, of course, we let x be an arbitrary real number, and we assume x is not equal to 0. We can let m be an arbitrary natural number, choosing to just use the principle of universal generalization for the variable m, and then we can use the principle of mathematical induction on the variable n. To do this, we begin by considering the set of those natural numbers n for which x to the power m n is equal to x to the power m raised to the exponent n. And this is for our chosen arbitrary constant m. To prove that the number 1 is in the set a, we can look at the left-hand side of this equation when the number n has a value of 1. This gives us the expression x to the exponent m times 1, which is x to the exponent m. And of course, the expression x to the exponent m when raised to the power 1 is x to the exponent m. And so this gives us x to the exponent m raised to the exponent n when n has a value of 1. This proves that the number 1 is in the set a. 
To prove that A is an inductive set, we begin with an arbitrary element n in A. For this arbitrary n, we then have the equation x to the exponent m n equals x to the exponent m raised to the exponent n. From this, we're trying to prove that the value n plus 1 is also in the set A. This means we're trying to demonstrate the equation x to the exponent m multiplied by n plus 1 is equal to x to the exponent m raised to the exponent n plus 1. To get this equation from our assumed equation, we can start with our assumed equation and multiply both sides by x to the exponent m. Using the property that we just showed, we know that when we multiply powers of x, the exponents add. This means that on the left-hand side, we have x to the exponent mn plus m. On the right-hand side, we have x to the exponent m raised to the power n times x to the exponent m. And from the definition of natural number exponents, this gives us x to the exponent m raised to the power n plus 1. Looking again at the left-hand side, all we need to do is factor out the common value of m, and we have x to the exponent m times n plus 1 on the left, and on the right-hand side, we still have x to the exponent m raised to the power n plus 1, which is the equation we were trying to produce. This proves that the number n plus 1 is an element in the set A, and so A is an inductive set. The principle of mathematical induction then tells us that since A is an inductive set containing the number 1, A contains all natural number values of n. And so our equation holds for all values of n, and since m was arbitrary, it also holds for all values of m. And of course, since x was an arbitrary, non-zero real number, we now know that this equation holds for all such real numbers. And that completes the proof.